Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this wonderful showcase, this panel for the Black Comic Arts Festival. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure. I am Victor Dandridge to be a part of this. And we are going to be talking about this amazing, this amazing title called The Blues Man. Uh, joining us today, we have the creative team behind the entire project. We have John Jennings, who obviously contributed to this brilliant cover that he's showcasing right now. But also we have the originator, the author, Stuart Jaffe. Hello, hello, hello. And the artist for this one, uh, Mr. Garrett. Hello, how are you? I want to make sure he's, he's Hello. There. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I had to make sure you didn't freeze right there. Uh, There's Garrett Ganey joining yeah. us here. And uh, let's, let's jump right into this. Um, the Blues Man, I have to admit, like before I heard of this project, um, I was unaware of the Blues Man in, in any capacity. So the research and, and, and really kind of experience of jumping into it was kind of mind boggling because it was like, this is a huge series. How am I just now finding out? Like, I feel like the odd man. When did you come up with this? So this goes back a long ways, like, well, eight or nine years mm -hmm. ago. Um, so, okay, well, first to start, you have to know that I, I taught myself to play guitar off the of blues starting when I was about 15. I discovered Robert Johnson and nice. Skip James and Sunhouse and all of that and B.B. King. And I used that to learn to play guitar and I've been playing for the last 30 some years and I'm in a little blues band right now. Well, not right now because of, of current situations, there's right. no place to gig, but we normally, <laughs> so I love the blues. And, uh, and as I became a, a writer, a fiction writer, I was, was looking for places to, you know, put my passions in. And uh, I, I wrote a, a six book, post-apocalyptic epic fantasy called the Maya Chronicles. And in the first, the opening scene of the first book, Maya is chasing down this assassin who uh, looks like a Delta bluesman from like the 1920s and he's got mm -hmm. a guitar and he's got this sword that's in the neck of the guitar. And he's part of this group and it's in this parallel, it's a parallel world that where magic caused the apocalypse and, and he is, Part of this group called the Bluesmen, which are this like, uh, uh, there's just this little, little uh, I, I can't even get the word for it, a, a cove of, of people who are um, assassins for hire because that's how they're surviving in this post-apocalyptic wasteland, and uh, and they are kind of a secondary villain throughout the whole through the book, but I really love them, and so I brought them back in the third book and in the sixth book <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh but they're all they're always villains in the book <clears throat> and i still i was like i gotta do something cooler with this because i want one of them to be a hero but i was done with the series so then i uh decided i would do a spin-off and write a short story where one of these bluesmen uh was kind of zapped through a, a, a magical vortex with, and in his world, there's all these like mutated monsters and stuff mm -hmm. they fight. And all of those thing, things came with him into our world. And no matter how bad this world is in reality, it's far better than what he was living in. So this is paradise to him. And he's like, you know what? If I can just kill off all these monsters, I I'd be here. pretty good. And besides being in a, the part I forgot to mention was that these bluesmen, uh, they can create magic spells by playing their guitars and, and vibrating the air around. Right. So I wrote that, that short story. It seemed to do pretty good. So I started writing more and I basically took nine short stories and made one big novel out of it, essentially. So, and, uh, and so that was, that was it. And I think, I forget if it was all done or not when I met John. Okay. But I met I John was about, right. was it all done? I think it was, or, or maybe there was like maybe... One um, couple left, no, maybe something no, like that. But no. I know it was it was well into the series, and I, no. I, uh, I was a, I was a guest um, author at Mysticon one the year that John was the artist guest of honor. Mm -hmm. He was sitting there with Bill Campbell uh, of Rosarium, and you know signing stuff, and and I walked up, and and at that time John's Blue Hand Mojo had just come out, right? Or the first the. I don't even know if the first full issue came out. Maybe it was a teaser. It was like a chapter. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it caught my eye and, and I was like, blues. <laughs> and we started, <laughs> and you and I, I remember standing in that dealer's room with you for like a half hour or something, just, just 
talking about blues music and and blues this and blues that and i was telling you about my series and you were telling me about yours and we were, by the end of that weekend uh, this was in roanoke virginia just a little convention mm -hmm. by the end of that weekend we were like we got to work together right i'll let I you pick that. it up from there because I I that. <laughs> that's my yeah and that's yeah and so i think you know me uh stewart and bill ended up going out to dinner and it was mm -hmm. a late night <laughs> and it was, yeah and um yeah and so i started reading the blues man i really loved the story and this is also also before uh, you know a lot of a lot of life changes happened I, I, this is before i got married right. this was before kindred jumped off um yeah and, We're and still also, in new york I mean, at the time i was still in new york at the time yeah i ended up moving to i live in california now obviously you know and uh yeah but you know i was going to be the artist on the piece originally and we so i started doing um character designs and trying to figure and one of my favorite things was like uh the character the lady of the grave which right. came from which was really inspired by daughters of the dust a little, a little bit right to it if i recall correctly um uh yeah so we because we uh i we were talking originally we were talking about whether about just adapting the original short stories and i was kind of like didn't want to do it because i just didn't want to i'd written them and i didn't feel like writing them again right. right and so we decided we would do just continue the story mm -hmm. and you you were like you mentioned the daughters of the dust and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about and you're like you got to see that you gave me like a list of that and some i, I don't remember it's this was like again seven or eight years ago so you gave me a list of some some voodoo documentaries and things like that and i did all i i, I did all that research and and i was like i remember saying to you i loved this lady of the grave from that video uh, from that movie and and that kind of started us on the road Right, right, right. I love that. And, love and that. you know, of course, you know, life gets in the way. This is like I said, Stuart and I have been trying to work together in different capacities for a while. And uh, Tim Fielder actually was our was supposed to work on the oh, project wow. too. And then he got he ended up getting um, you know his book deal. And <laughs> and um, you know, I think when when did you when were you my student, Garrett? Now well, I forgot what 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 year you were now. 2016? 2016? Yeah, so I think yeah, yeah. So Garrett and I really, really hit. Yeah, because that was. Oh yeah, we talked about like horror movies. It was like after class, and it was like, "Oh, you've seen this?" And it's like, "Oh, I've seen this," and then we just talked about horror movies all day. Like, it, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Right. That's really the way that like the networking of the industry really works. Is you know, it's not about just hey, you're skilled, and I want to hire you for your skill set. It's I also want you to be interested in this right. project so that you bring the right energy uh, yeah. that, you know, life gets in the way. Sometimes what this ends up becoming is life puts things off until the right people are ready to do what you need them to do. And that's, exactly. that's what this exactly. sounds like. Um, so, so yeah, so, I, you know, then we pitched the, the project to Garrett and, um, you know, Stuart liked his work. I love his, I love his work. You know, it's just gnarly and beautiful. You know? It is fantastic. It is, yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, all, it's all like traditional ink too. Are you serious? I thought, oh yeah. my god. Okay, oh, yeah. that's, that's not dude. Man. Everything by, by hand. Yep. I, in fact, I've got. I think I have some pages. Over, oh, I'll grab real quick. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Right. When you when you get back, Garrett, I want you to uh, tell us some of your your artist inspirations. Who are the people that inspire you uh, when you get back? But while he's gone, uh, Stuart, you were talking about how you know the blues was definitely an influence. Um, you are building essentially this this overt shared universe. What mm -hmm. are some of your influences to tell stories in that format in that fashion? Um. <laughs> I, I, that's a huge, like, I, there's so much, I, when I read, I'm, I'm a very uh, eclectic reader. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I grew up loving science fiction and fantasy, uh, you know, from, from everything, from, from Robert Heinlein to, to, you know, all the big names back then that were big names. And then I, in col or in, right at the end of high school, I discovered uh, the literature as, mm -hmm. as actually, I ended up reading um, Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck, which is actually nonfiction. But right. it was the first thing where I was like, oh, if I'm not assigned to read this, it's actually good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I understand that. And so that all, be, you know, I, I really got influenced by those guys. And uh, 
I mean, there's so much James Elroy. I, I've, I've always loved, it, actually, this is something else that John and I clicked on, was that we both always loved the pulp or yep. the uh, comics. I definitely got that feel. And, and uh, you know, I've got the, I, I've been over the years get, building up my, uh, my, the creepy magazine. They've been, Dark Horse is putting out year after year, they've been putting out the, uh, the whole yeah. archive. Yeah. And uh, every Christmas, I'm just like, I put that up on my list because they're really expensive. So I'm like, I hate buying them. Somebody get them for me. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that, you know, artist wise, there's that. Um, I happened to luck out that I was a teenager at a great time when Marvel Comics was just, I, I can remember the first comic book I bought was uh amazing spider-man i don't remember the numbers anymore it's like 183 it's the one where the first the secret wars had just finished they and they were debuting his black oh the black uh, suit. yes and that was literally the first i was like well okay i remembered spider-man from growing up as a kid and i read right. this and i'm like oh man and i was all <laughs> in you know and back then comics were like i don't know 50 cents i it, me and my buddies every week we were get. i mean you, you collect like 20 titles a month of course yeah, it, was, it was ridiculous oh my yeah. god so easy. Hey, i couldn't afford it now but back then you know. so so garrett tell yeah, us man. some of your your artistic influences uh when it comes to your art and illustration sure oh um uh, well when i first got in i read nothing but like spawn i was okay. like a big mcfarland devotee right. uh and then i got into uh well i'd always been a fan my mom was always a fan of, of horror television shows and stuff mm -hmm. so we watched like tales from the crypt and so eventually you get into that and i started looking at guys like jack davis and graham ingles and all those illustrators and so i tried to um something that's in between like an image comic and then like a classic horror comic is kind nice. of where, where i would shoot a lot of, lots of detail uh, and lots of, uh, but lots of violence and gore. I love exploitation movies and all kinds of stuff. And so, like, and when we were doing the art for the pages, it wasn't like, oh, and he's got to rip her head off. And then I was like, well, let's rip the hell out of that head. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a monster. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's brilliant. Well, we That's absolutely that. brilliant. I love that. We actually have we have very similar uh, backgrounds and tastes when it comes to that type of uh, comic. You know, like still with just mentioning creepy. I, I was a massive fan of like the Warren Harum books. Right. And EC Comics and even like the, the, the kind of knockoffs that DC did, you know, like Chaos and Unexpected and Ghosts and, you know, the characters like Dr. 13 and Johnny Perry, right. those characters. I was a huge fan of that stuff, you know. Oh, I love and, that. Yeah, and it kind of segued into like my love of Vertigo comics too, because I think we all are, were reading that too, like John Constantine oh. and, you know, Swamp Thing and stuff like that too, so. Yeah. See, and it, that kind of segues perfectly because for me, I thought one of the things that was really interesting was looking at the genre labeling for Bluesman. Um, it's it's listed as urban fantasy, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think it, in, in 2012, that was a very apt description. But I think mm -hmm. we've become more nuanced and creative in, in the way that we describe things. And immediately after reading it, the, the term uh, Afro-conjurism, um, and I believe oh. I first heard that from, from you, John. Um, really? Yeah, I think that was the first time I'd ever heard that phrase. Um, but that's what it reminded me of was this sense of, um, you know, there's obviously a root in, in you know, black culture. Um, yep. but there's there's this this thing with magic, you know, where yes. Afrofuturism always has this science fiction lean to it. This is now, you know, exploring the other, you know, another side of things. And, yep. uh, you know, Stuart, I definitely want to get your thoughts on that it, as the development of more terminologies come out. Um, does that something that you that you lean into as a as an author, or um, are you like this is kind of the lane and descriptors that I'm kind of comfortable with? I don't know if I'm ready for these new. So, <laughs> so really, this isn't. I'm really not trying to dodge the question because no, sure. this is because there is an answer, but it's it's uh, when I'm writing as an artist, you know, when mm -hmm. you're creating something, the last thing I ever want to do is say, oh, this is going to be. And you know this specific niche. Right. You the, the reality is that that all those categories are are something are the business side of these right. things. It's 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 they you know most of these categories were created by bookstores so that people would come in and have nowhere to go to get the, the goods right. that they want. You know, and so uh, I've learned over time not to. Th th there's I think everybody did, especially once eBooks became a viable reality and, and the ability to have, uh, be an indie artist 
uh, or like I'm a hybrid artist. I'm mostly indie, but a little bit through presses. And once that happened, you know, the shackles were off. You didn't have to go to a big publisher and say, okay, right. this is going to fit in this niche for you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, something like the Bluesman, which is, you know, it's technically, well, it's science fiction because it's, he's from a parallel universe, parallel but universe. it's fantasy because yeah. there's magic. It's right. pulpy, it's horror, it's all, you know, it's action. You just can't mix all that together. You couldn't back in the day. Right. Now, you know, now I can mix it all together. And I called it urban fantasy because you're right. Well, back, you know, back a while when I first wrote it, it was a good catch all. And it still right. kind of is a catch all in, in yeah. that it's, it's not, if you say fan, just call it fantasy, a lot of people will think Game of Thrones. Right. It's Sword, more sorcery. It's, yeah. yeah, and if I said science fiction, they'd be like, well, there, there's magic in this. Right. So, right. you know, if I said all the, the so it was just kind of the catch I could come with, up with. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I'm basically of the opinion, you call what you want as long as you get it and read it. You know? hey. <laughs> now that's the best answer right there. You want <laughs> If you bought it, you can call it whatever you want to. Um, okay, now when it comes to this particular medium, going into a comic book format, um, how adept were you at already writing for that medium? Was that something that took a little work? Because it's different. It's very different. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. Um, it, well, okay, I, I had advantages and disadvantages. This was the first finished comic I've ever written. Okay. I've ever had produced. I've written comics before, but it's difficult, you know, without the backing of a, a producer right. to get them made. Mm -hmm. And um, so my previous, so I'd had a little bit of experience with the format. Um, but before I was a, a writer, right, when I went to undergraduates uh, in college, I was a theater uh, major. I, I studying directing um, with, you know, my eyes of becoming a, a film director. Mm -hmm. And I came, I moved out to California and I was dealt in that Hollywood for a very short time and discovered it wasn't for me. But, but the point is I was in that process. I was writing plays. I was writing screenplays. I'd learned how to communicate through dialogue and to think somewhat visually, mm -hmm. but most importantly, and I think uh, this is something uh, Garrett and John, I think, I think really appreciated is that I had learned how to, as a director, I learned how to deal with designers, right? I have to deal with a, costume designer and, and, right. and, and so I learned long ago that I was going to get the best results if I didn't tell them exactly this is exactly what it should look like but rather say here's the feel here's the mood here's what I'm going for mm -hmm. and and sometimes I'd give a specific of here's where my where I am right. here's what I think but make it clear that that's not what I want to see. I want to see something beyond that. If I get back, I always figure, and I, I go through this because I'm the art director for my own book covers. When I deal with artists, if I get back exactly what I said, I did a bad job. <laughs> I should get back something far, be I should get back something that looks nothing like what I said, but I look at it and I say, that's exactly that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> yes. 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 And, and so my yeah. scripts, I mean, again, John and, and Garrett can speak more to them, but my scripts were mostly dialogue and just hopefully, and just enough to convey what I, what I've envisioned yeah. uh, as far yeah. as the, the I thought that really well done personally, you know, very, very, you know, um, Terrace, as far as like the you know the conversation, the type of stuff that was happening, I thought it was really well done. That's awesome, yeah. Garrett. Uh, what about you? What in terms of experience? How many projects uh, have you had under your uh, belt? Uh, uh, Garrett, oh, I'm sorry about this. Garrett, you might have to let him back in. There's a storm. In here. Oh, is that it? Knocked him out. There yeah. we go. Sorry about that. Oh, there he goes. All right. Let's see. Let's see what we got here because it looks like the. It's the joys of Zoom. Man. Yeah, man. This is what we do. It's crazy, man. <laughs> I'm like, there we go. There Sorry, you go. guys. We're having a storm down here in Houston. So, <laughs> no, it's, it's <laughs> quite all right. <laughs> man, We're gonna, so sorry. I didn't realize we, there was, you know, it, so it, yeah, it froze and my bad. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't Look know. I'm, I'm not used to having weather anymore. So, it's like, it's like, <laughs> so when it's like, Oh yeah, so Garrett, we're talking California. about how brilliant I am at conveying stuff to you, and now is your time. <laughs> right. 
Oh, okay. Well, um, actually, I got I got kind of an easy gig because a lot of the stuff was already, or the, the panel layouts were kind of decided already by the time I had gotten to the project. Because I remember John when you'd given me that that some some of the stuff I did I did redraw a lot of some of the action scenes. Mm -hmm. I think I I kind of kicked up the violence and really went <laughs> for uh, for well, well yeah it, it was weird to really ha amp it up and make it a little bit more comic booky and trauma movie ish and just kind of nuts. But but everything kept getting okay. Like I don't think any, you, you. I never got told no. That's too much. And so I was like, okay. Um, and it was a lot of fun to work on. My my family, or a lot of it's from Louisiana, South Louisiana. And so like I went down to visit my uncle in Lafayette, and we just drove around to get kind of a feel. And I've been down to the Voodoo District in New Orleans tons of times. And so this was really close. And even out here, you know, in East Texas and Houston, you know, we're all on the Bayou and stuff. And so right. uh, I. The subject matter on a lot of levels was a lot of, well, I was very, very, very interested in it. And John and I talked a lot about that when he first brought the project to me. And I had just gotten out of school with a degree. And I was like, yeah, I'll draw it. I'll do the hick. Okay. I'm like, like <laughs> is this a gig? Let's go. Like, let's make it happen. And it, it, oh, like, yeah. From a visual standpoint, is there a character that you love drawing the most so far? Oh, man. I think it's probably the Lady of the Grave. She was the most fun to um, John. John to give me his designs for, her, and I really wanted to make her um, like real, like turn the, her coffin into her hips and have yeah. the tentacles come out of the, the thing. And right. and she was just so big. She's so much larger than a person because the idea of like a big head, like if your head's this big and someone's <laughs> talking to you, and it's like right. that. That's just something horrifying about just the size difference. Of and then, of course, the blues man is super fun to draw. I like older characters. It's fun because they're wrinkly. I, I, you know, this, <laughs> this car was made to draw monsters and wrinkly people. So like old guys and monsters, is don't, <laughs> don't get me pretty ladies. Uh, I, I, I can draw because you know, business requires that. But, but I love to draw those things. Like you can tell the cover art that I did. I took tons of time on that. And that's like everything I love to draw on it. And Scotch is a lot of fun too because it's like his young buddy and there's right. some good comedy. There's a lot of visual gags in the book. So it, it was a little bit of everything, man. I, I dug it. it. I love that. <laughs> I, was, I was shocked that he chose to do it, that he chose to ink it by hand. I was like, oh, my God. But it's a beautiful, beautiful work. It's you know, beautiful. It's a beautifully done cool. book. And, yeah. you know, hopefully we can get out more. We got to get, we got to finish this. You know, it's yes, like, yes. Before, like, another company tries to scoop you up, because that's, I could see that happening. Like, that's how good it is. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Really. I mean, I'm like, um, what was really cool about this particular issue is that, you know, it's the first of uh, a seven part, you know, uh, kind of limited series, mm -hmm. but it also stood alone. You know what I'm saying? It actually functioned, it actually could have been a, a standalone book. And so we're like, you know what? You know, we got to get this out. You know? Right. And so despite what's going on with our with our creative lives, because all of us are busy, all of us have like a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know how many books, I don't know how many books like Stuart has put out since this book. <laughs> <laughs> He's writing, he writes like all the time. I love Garrett's that. always posting work constantly and working for clients constantly. And and like we said earlier, you know, I have a toddler and I'm running an imprint and all the things, you know, teaching. So, but you know, it's a it's a it's a project that we all love. So I was like, well, let's, you know, let's put this out. And, you know, so I did the production design on it. So I actually um, helped, you know, get it toned up and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, Garrett brought in a, another young lady to help with some of the, the tones on the on the um on the images but they were so well illustrated that you know it really doesn't it doesn't need a lot you know what i'm saying it really right. doesn't need a lot. you know it just needs to be to live on a page i don't want anything to, to disrupt the um the intensity of the inks and stuff and then because we had been working for a while we had all this like you know uh production you know background stuff so you could see like our thoughts about like the sketches and stuff like that right and as Garrett's saying, I think the Lady of the Grave is probably one of my favorite characters I've ever designed. You know, she's she's and terrifying in the best way possible. I want to make something utterly terrifying. I yeah. think, the <laughs> more, I think the only things that are more terrifying are the monsters from Box of Bones. You know, because I love those. Mm. They're like, they're like, they're nightmares fuel. Right. <laughs> Lady of the Grave, she she's not taking no shorts though, because she has the whole like thing with the bones and the collar and then. Yeah, she, yeah. It's we don't have to read it. Read it so you guys know how terrifying. <laughs> This actually is, because this is one of those things, like, I love horror, and this is right. one of those things where it's like, did I read this too late at night? Is the sun still out? <laughs> yeah, okay, cool, we're good, we're good. Um, that's awesome. I think it really did catch the, the, the essence of the, of Stuart's series, you know? Yes. With, with everybody, because I'm a fan of that, and, you know, 
And I think, yeah, we want to keep pushing it and, and work, continue to work on things together as well. You know? Now, I do want to, I want to, that brings up a very interesting wanna, point. I, I would especially want to see, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that this sells well enough that we can put the, our efforts into doing the rest of it because it's all written. I yeah. wrote it. You're, this is the, the weirdest part of the, the story. When John and I originally decided to do it, we thought we're going to get this thing done, done in like a couple months. Right. And so I wrote all seven issues. And then life started happening and things happened and Kindred right. became a possibility for you. And that took years to get done. And, you know, one thing after another, but they've right. been written and I haven't, I haven't, I have to, I, there are, I have, I'd have to dig them up to see how the whole story goes. They, <laughs> there are, you know, the specifics, but there are moments, so many moments. And I know what the big, I remember vividly what the big climax is. And I so badly, especially after we did this, this first one, I'm like, I want to see what Garrett's going to do with this. Yes. I want to see this yes. scene, you know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, when it comes to the publishing side of this, um, mm -hmm. the imprint that this is under, Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about this. So you, sir, you already are publishing things of your, of your own accord. Is mm -hmm. this a part of that publishing imprint or something else? No, nope. all this, this was uh, all John's doing. <laughs> I, I, you can ask him because I actually, I wrote it and I've been along. And then the you're like, here you go. <laughs> so here, like, let's make it, make a book. So yes, yeah, so I actually ended up becoming more like a, um, a producer of something, mm -hmm. so, you know? And so, we decided to call our little imprint Fuller Comics, and and I, so I designed a logo that ha it, it looks like it's the 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 circular part of his guitar, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And it, and so it's his it's his comic piece. But I also have like um, I kind of put it up under this this kind of experimental imprint with Amani, you know, with um, you know, with a uh, Pete game. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of how we decided to do it and kind of kind of gauge how how that's been doing. So pretty decently but we need to push it more honestly that's why i wanted to do this you know it's of course that like we're juggling a lot of stuff but we need to do better with like pr and and, and getting people to, to look at it because it's it's a great series and you know i think it's a well-produced book i'm really proud of the, the work that we did when i put it together as a as a document like as a designed object i was like yo this is really nice <laughs> this is <laughs> it's turned out great um yeah and so and so that's the thing and so i'm we're just trying to figure out you know, placement and things because essentially it would ideally put it out as a graphic novel would be great. Right. Um, and just trying to figure out what the what the next moves are for the next you know next chapters. Uh, right now it's one one chapter out, but we want to get it all out. So. Of course, of course. Yeah. Has has there been a, a crossover from your n novel or novella, depending on how you want to you know break it down, uh, fan base already to the reaction to this comic? I don't know yet. Okay. Uh, I mean, the thing's only been, the thing hasn't been out that long yet. Right. So, um, and, and right now, if I'm pretty sure it's still just digital, right? There's no. Right. At the moment, yes, yeah, it's just digital. Right. Yeah. So, oh, okay. so my readership tends to skew a bit older. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of them are waiting till they can buy a physical copy. Got you. Got you. Yeah, uh, we probably not do like indie planet. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna get it onto a, on a space where they can get it. There you yeah. go. There so you go. so that there will be crossover then. Um, yeah. So yeah, we need to prioritize that. There are some spaces where, in fact, you know what? That's you know that that is good to know because I think we'll say, oh, I know we talked about that, but we need to get we need to get it in in the in the hands. You know? Yes, you know, absolutely. Thing, and I have the conventions has been really really yeah. hard. Right. Know, you know, if this was if we were like in San Francisco and having actually physical copies, we would sell a, a ton of ton of books. You know, or if we de debuted this at the Schomburg for us, right? Be, you know, <laughs> so yeah, but it's just it's yeah. But the last well, go ahead. I was gonna say the last con I worked was actually on Beaumont because I'm in Texas, so it's not quite as as locked down down here. Right. And uh, and I was pimping it out. I was saying, hey, go check it out here, and I hope that that helped out some. But they're like, is there a physical one? Because there was a huge demand for it. Of course. And uh, and I said, well. I we gotta wait. We gotta wait. The, you know, it's COVID's happening right now. And they are oh, okay, okay, okay. So there's a big demand for it. Comic collectors, they like to have a physical thing. Of and course. if it's chromium and it comes with trading cards, they like it even more. And you can sign <laughs> a, a physical style. object, and that's something that they like. And that's yeah. very true. Yeah, yeah. That's we also true. have. We also have like. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, re there's a. There's a poster that actually that Tim Fielder did for us a while back that I'm probably gonna you know reconfigure because you know he's getting ready to drop his book. So I figured, oh, you know, we can actually like ride that wave. That yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, because this new book drops on the 19th. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Are there any uh, plans or, or potential, you know, uh, plans for doing a, a crowdfunding campaign to also amass more of a marketable following? I was, you know, I've thought about it. We haven't discussed it as the three of us haven't talked about it yet. Um, I think we were just like really excited to get this first piece out, but we definitely mm -hmm. circle back and think about that, you know, because okay. I actually was like, you know, doing an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter, you know, um, could be a way to go. Definitely. You know? Definitely. I always would recommend to, especially to um, do it for this particular book because it doesn't have as widespread of a reach already. Um, yeah. And it's not more work for you that becomes, you know, that much easier to manage during the Kickstarter because you've already got the book done. It's really just a matter of seeing how many people want this physical copy that you can get in their hands real quick and just keep running with it. That's, I think, you'll find that you have a huge fan base chomping at the bit for it because I'm definitely going to be that guy to sign up and buy it. Um, this, was, this was an absolute fantastic read. I have to like truly say that again. Um, as a creative, do you guys get to divorce yourself from the work and, and get to experience it as a reader and like kind of forget that you had a hand in its creation? Do you do that? For me, um, I, I, go ahead, go ahead Garrett. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know, I don't think I can, because, because, because I think, I think you're inking it and you're doing all that stuff and you're just like happy that it's completed. That's right. that's kind of the joy, but uh, but I don't know if I can reread it the same way. I'm just kind of like, thank God it's done. Um, <laughs> but it was a blast, and I want and I wanted to say uh, to CCA. Uh, where I met John and he teaches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause like I did all the lettering on this. I did inking, hand inking. I did all the penciling and a lot of that stuff and tools I learned at CCA. And I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that that got said there. Cause the, the, you know, it wasn't like I was just one job. It was a bunch of things. And I was able to do that uh, very competently because of what I learned there nice. and all the great professors and stuff like that. So I'll make sure that that got said. That's awesome. That network That's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's fine for me. Uh, like normal, like with a book, I, mm -hmm. I, as John mentioned, I write a lot. I usually put out four or five books a year. And so the, it's moving so fast that I write them, I edit them, uh, you know, I revise them and I never, I'm done. And then I'm you're done. The thing. And I, <laughs> I, you know, I don't ever want to read it again. I've read it so many times, but, right. but I, so I never really experience it like a reader. Um, this, because there was such a long time between when I wrote them mm -hmm. and when, when Garrett got involved and when then, and then it took Garrett, you know, because we weren't getting paid for this. So he had to, you know, put it aside for every time you got a paid job or anything. Right. So it took a while to happen. So by the time I'm reading the finished product, I have, you know, it's like I said, if we ever go in you know, with, when we do the next one, I'll, I'll have to, I'll be reading it very much. Like I, I'll be like, Hey, that was a good idea. Oh, that's like, awesome. Right? So, <laughs> Whoever wrote this is amazing. <laughs> um, Cause you can, I mean, when you're talking about years, yeah, right. you, you forget I've moved on. I've written so many other things and uh, you know, I have, again, there are specific images and moments um, that stand out. And some of them, I remember John and I have both talked about a couple of them yep. where we're just like, Oh, that moment, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> exactly. but beyond that, I mean, I'm trying to, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I look forward to reading like a reader and then I don't, since I'm not an artist, I get to see their interpretation right. of it. And that makes it very lively for me too. It's been pretty cool because, you know, I've had, you know, I wear like all the hats now. Right. So from, from, you know, writer, editor, you know, artist and then, you know, and scholar, and, you know, I write a, a lot about representation and race in comics. I mean, it's mm -hmm. one of the things, you know, um, that I focus on. And actually there's some of the stuff that, you know, I was teaching Garrett when we were my student there at CCA. Um, so, you know, it's a, I, I read so much stuff, but when I look at it, I'm like, oh, wow, this is, um, I, thought was, I think I was able to divorce myself from, from it. You know, I think That's I was awesome. actually able to enjoy it as as someone who's like just looking at it as a as someone who loves comics and loves this particular type of comic. So, um, yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to we 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 basically have to redouble our efforts. I think what it is is that as Stuart was saying, mm -hmm. uh, we get, you know, all of us are, are professional creatives. You mm -hmm. know, and so we're we're trying to put work out. We're trying, especially now, you know, and. Um, yeah, because we have a captive audience now, right? <laughs> to a certain degree. <laughs> so right. Mm -hmm. work yeah. as possible. Um, also, too, there's been a lot of interest, as you know, Victor, in 
black speculative culture right now. very much so very so, much so you know getting getting more of a, a buzz around the story you know it could probably it might get picked up and developed into something else you know that's the other thing so come on like, let's make that happen let's make that yeah, happen i think it's very possible because it it has that it has elements it has very um cinematic elements to it you know, very so much so i see it being like a tv show or mm -hmm. like standalone film you know it can have that kind of feel to it so especially now that there's you know all the streaming services that can do yep. more that you could never do this on like a you know, like an abc or something no. yeah. there's just you know i mean the opening panels alone of that first issue are so blood so <laughs> right <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, you can see something happening because like, it has like the, I can see something like the uh, the aesthetics of like the first season of American Gods, you know, right? That, that kind of cinematography. But the story itself reminds me of like if you took like that old movie uh, Crossroads with Ralph Macchio and Joe Seneca, yeah, and, and you combine it with like your Jimbo and <laughs> and like uh, yeah. and the TV show Supernatural, you know, what I'm saying if you took all those, yeah, things, put all that together. Right, like that's a perfect pitch right there. That's what it, it, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about like, okay, what is this story? And it's like when right. I talk to people about it, I'm like, okay, it has these elements in it that you recognize, but also it comes out in a way that you just really wouldn't wouldn't realize. And you know, as Stu was saying too, it's like we've had so many hands on it. Like I had several artists on it. When I realized, like, you know what, it's a fool's errand for me to actually try to do this right now. But I want to do this book, so right. how do I figure that out? Um, so when Tim, because actually Tim got pretty far on <laughs> on working on it, you know, and so we actually have like these different iterations of the story, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, when Garrett came on and started doing his work on, it, I was like, oh, this is the same story but very different, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So it was an interesting. Uh, it was there was an interesting project to kind of you know to to attack that way. So of course, and then actually coming back to it and doing. Uh, a, a logo that we were satisfied with and then trying to in pulling together like the production of it so i love it i think one of the the key elements to to getting it to where it is is that um we, we all all three of us have just became very passionate about it yeah and I, and I think that was you know when 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 john realized he couldn't have he didn't have enough hands of his own Right. to actually draw it and we started having other artists go on it wasn't until garrett clicked in because garrett clearly had the passion to just keep he wanted to you know he, he got it he got what we were going for um and took it further than that and of in his own way which was awesome and and then he just kept i mean i, I know he came on when garrett came on it was like a month later and i'm seeing pages and i'm like yeah. whoa you know yeah. <laughs> It's, it's are coming to life moving. right now. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's nothing like that. Yeah. Taking a character, especially coming from prose, you know, and actually, because it's this character lives, at, you know, in Scotch and, and, and you know, in Fuller, they live in a, in a series of prose books. Right. And so, you know, that's got to be great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, see them, like, just kind of jumping off the page, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's wild. I love that. I love that. Well, we are coming close to our time on this one. So um, we're going to do a round robin, uh, start with Garrett, so that people can find you on social media and other uh, platforms that you might uh, populate on. Cool. Uh, I'm at uh, Ganey Graphics on Instagram. That's where you can find me, or Garrett Ganey on Facebook. And I post art uh, all the time. It's always monsters and, and creatures and good-looking women getting attacked by knife-wielding maniacs. So please come on by, and <laughs> we're, we're cracking out more cool movement. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Stuart? I'm Stuart Jaffe. You can find me at the creatively named StuartJaffe.com, or uh, I'm on mostly on Facebook as far as social media goes. And... Uh, and actually, if you go out, if you go to my website, you get, there's a thing you can sign up for a newsletter, and you'll get a book, an entire novel for free, just for signing up. That's so fantastic. you can try out some of my stuff that way. I love that, John. Yeah, so I'm on Facebook. I don't know exactly what my Facebook uh, handle is, but I'm, <laughs> you find me out there. Um, I'm on. I also have a, a, a Facebook fan site for another book, Black Comics Return. So you mm -hmm. can actually find us there me and damian duffy's book and we have a, a nice following there uh on instagram i'm at john jennings art all one word so it's so it's intermittently like you know me posting about books i'm working on and my child so that's about, <laughs> so it's like, 
pictures, like baby pictures. All and, things like, you've created. That's what it right, is. Right, exactly. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> and, then, um, and then also I'm on Twitter at J.I. Jennings, and you can find me there as well. And I'm pretty, I'm, pre I'm mostly posting art, though, you know, and, and retweeting things. I don't really get into Twitter things too much. I that's got you. about it. And that's, um, I think that is all the places you can find me. Brilliant, brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Once again, I'm Victor Dandridge. You guys can get your own digital copies right now of the Bluesmen at uh, Peep Game Comics. That's comics with an X at the end dot com. Uh, definitely support. Grab an issue. You'll love it. Uh, right now, I think it's actually, it's on sale right now. So yeah. all more reason to go ahead and grab it, read it, love it, support it. So that way we get more of it uh, coming soon. Thank you uh, to BCAF for, for having us all here. Uh, we thoroughly appreciate your love and support, and we hope that the rest of this event is as fantastic as this one. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. You're, 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 you're. <laughs>